The Tampa Museum of Art has been in its current location on the Hillsborough River since 2010, but the museum itself started 100 years ago. Let's go behind the scenes of a new exhibition marking the museum's centennial. We have just opened our 100th anniversary celebration exhibition titled The Making of a Museum, 100 Years, 100 Works. When visitors walk in, they will see examples of our collection and the story of the museum represented in 100 works. So there are 50 works from the modern and contemporary collection, as well as 50 works from the collection of Greek and Roman art, but also some works from the 18th and 19th century collection of prints and photographs, as well as some examples of neoclassical sculpture. Our collection has approximately 8,000 objects in it, so to choose only a hundred was quite a big task. My former colleague Dr. Seth Pevnik and I and looking at the collection it was important that we didn't pick you know just our favorites or works that we thought were the best examples in the collection. We picked objects that really again told the story of the museum that we knew resonated with our visitors and our patrons. So you see examples of artists from the community that really helped create the strength of the creative culture here in Tampa but also some big names that you might not expect in our collection. Well, for example, I'm sitting in front of this great colorful painting by the artist Theo Wujic, who we know has had um, an incredible impact and legacy on the community. There are also examples by artists such as Joe Testaseca, Harrison Covington, Bruce Marsh, Mernette Larson. And to highlight an artist like Mernette, who has now had such an international career in the art world, it's important to show off the contribution of Tampa artists to the art world in general. divided the exhibition into four sections. When you walk into the antiquities galleries, the first section you encounter is building a collection because our collection primarily started with the antiquities collection, primarily the Joseph B. Noble collection, which we took in 150 works of art that really anchored the start of what the Tampa Museum of Arts collection would come to be and become um, well known for. We have a wonderful collection of black and red figure vases and now our antiquities collection is considered one of the best in the country so we're very proud of that. The second section is titled Inspired By so we have combined the antiquities collection with some examples from contemporary art to show contemporary artists reflecting back on antiquity. Um, when you step into the modern and contemporary galleries, I've opened it with a section titled Soil, Sea, and Sky that looks at different representations of the landscape. And then you'll see in our landscape section just other examples of artists who have been so inspired by the Florida scenery. Sid Solomon, William Pockner, James Rosenquist, Robert Rauschenberg. There's a lot to see and a lot to absorb. And in the gallery that we are in now, it's called Figure Forward. So it's looking at how artists approach the figure and portraiture in our collection. You know, it's been really exciting just to see and to hear from people how much the museum means to them. It's been a place where people um, feel comfortable visiting, that they like coming here over and over again to see our different exhibitions. They are excited when we bring out favorite works of art. We know, for example, our Poseidon sculpture, Aphrodite, on the, on the antiquity side. We know that those are already recognizable objects to our community. But then the artists that we have within our collection, it just means a lot to celebrate what the artistic community means here in Tampa and to have everybody fill our galleries and celebrate with us. has moved from building to building, it's had different names, but a lot of the people involved have been involved for decades. I've been here now about three and a half years, so my time here is relatively short, so to go back and look through this history has been really an extraordinary experience. Looking back through our collection and knowing the history, I'm very inspired by the Rockwell Kent painting, uh, the Rockwell Kent landscape, which was one of the early works that entered the collection in the 1980s 
to a work just behind us by Pepe Mar, a sculpture titled Burning Up, which is one of our newest acquisitions. So we're trying to show the community how much collecting has meant to this institution through generous gifts from the community. If one of the founders of the museum walked in today and walked through our doors, I think they'd feel really proud of what we've accomplished. I think that they would be happy to see that we are caring for the collection to the best of our ability and bringing out works of art that make our community happy and curious and interested in art, especially as it's evolved over the past 100 years. I hope the community sees the museum as a place of inspiration, a place of curiosity, a place that they can come to and learn something new. Um, it's important to not only myself and our director, but our education team as well, that we continue to provide context and interesting, interesting material, interesting works of art to continue to just spark conversations about what's happening around the world. And we can see that in works of art just here on view now, what was the impressions of the world in the 1920s to general observations of personal identity today. So we like to make sure there's a little bit of something for everyone here. To learn more, visit tampamuseum.org.